Joey, can you hear me? Hey, Steve, coming in crystal clear. That's great. Let's make a start. So it's one o'clock. So it's good afternoon to many of you, but it's good morning to some and it's good evening to those of our friends and colleagues over in Europe. So, so excited to bring you Align Mix 2024. It's actually two years since we launched anything. So this has been a long time in the making. We put a lot of effort into it. So I'm really excited to bring this to you and I'm excited for you to get your hands on it and to start using some of the new features that we have in Align Mix 2024. So with that, let's dive in. I'm Steve, Steve Morn. Many of you uh, I already know. Uh, I've had most of my career in what would loosely be called Salesforce Strategy Consulting, uh, ZS, partner at Accenture, founder of Cosmix, and now a partner of the SC Group. An exciting development since our last uh, launch is that we've now uh, merged and become part of the SC Group. So we have uh, an expanded footprint in the US, in London, and in Switzerland. So that's me. And we're also joined by Joey, Joey Domagar. Do you want to say hi, Joey? Hey, everybody. It's great to have everyone back on another webinar. So Joey is the Director of Sales and Marketing. I know a lot of you will have interacted with Joey because he does a lot of the support and a lot of the alignment projects, as well as some of the strategy projects that we do in the consulting practice. We also have Amanda. Um, we haven't got her picture. We probably should have, but Amanda is new to the team. So you might be encountering her on some of those support calls. So today uh, we are going to talk a bit about the road to 2024, Align Mix 2024. But most of this presentation is going to be taking you through some of the really cool new features and capabilities of the new version. And then we're going to talk a bit about the roadmap, so where we're heading from here. And we have some launch offers for Align Mix 2024. And we're then we're going to take you through how to get the new version. And then finally, there's going to be a question and answer session at the end. Now, with that in mind, if you have any questions, please send them to joey.domagala at alignmix.com. You can also use the contact form at alignmix.com, and that will get to him. He's going to filter those questions, and we're going to have that uh, live session right at the end. So with that, let's talk a bit about the road to 2024. So it was around about seven years that we actually launched Alignmix 2016. Now, at that time, it was really revolutionary in terms of ease of use. And we had the new touch align feature. We made it easy to import data. It was a very fast rendering engine. And we sort of put everything that you needed in terms of thematic maps and charts into one package. And it really took off. So turn the clock forward. The next version was 2018, where we added sort of Google Maps export via KMLs and also the way of calculating an index. Then 2019 was a really big update because we added the third level of geography, regions, improved the import routine, and we moved to a more flexible file format that was compatible across versions. And then 2021 came, and there were two launches that year. We launched LineMix Pro 2021, and that had uh, some cool export features to PDFs and the bivariate analysis, but we also added the premium version, AlignMix AI 2021. And that really gave the super intelligent uh, optimization at speed and the touch optim optimized feature. And that's been very well received. So since then, we've had COVID and all sorts of disruption to the business, but uh, we've actually had some of our best years ever. And so we're ready to launch AlignMix 2024. Now, I should say this version has been, uh, OK, I think we're ready to launch. Oh, let's just add another feature. Oh, let's just add another feature. So uh, we thought we'd get this out a bit earlier, but there was always just one more thing to add. So uh, there's lots of different components to this. I hope you're going to enjoy uh, these components, and I hope they're going to be of tremendous value to you in your business. So. The first thing I want to show you is territory centers. So um, 
territory centers, you can customize how the centers are calculated. So this has sort of been under the hood in previous versions. And we had a, a sort of center calculation routine there, but we'd never really exposed it. And it was something that people would ask for. How do I get the sort of index weighted centroid of each territory? So you can now do that. And some of the implications of that is it's visible on all maps. Uh, we also have it visible in the tables and on the exports. It also means that we can have account based alignment labels up until now in previous versions, you actually needed some geography, some zip codes or some postcodes to be assigned to a territory before a label would show up. But now, because we have the centroids calculated, we can show account based labels. So that'd be great for those who have account based alignments. And we also have some cool new center analysis charts. And this was something that was uh, requested from one of our power users, and uh, I'm going to show you that now. So let's just flick over to Align Mix. So this is the screen that you know and love. And now you have this in the under the layers icon, you have centers and you can show the centers of territories, districts or regions. And once you put them on, you can see them as these uh, stars and obviously you can customize them. So uh, of course, these are a value when you're creating territories and you want to know, you know where you're going to hire the rep. Uh, you want to really know the the workload center. So I'm going to show you how you can um, calculate these under the territories tab. You now have territory centers and they can be visible or not visible. And this is the different ways of calculating it. It can be the zip code centroid. So in other words, the average of the latitude and longitude of the component zip codes in a territory, account centroid, the area, which is really the center of gravity of the territory. But probably most of you will be interested in the data. And here we have it based on the index, but any data series that is loaded into the into align mix can be used as the territory center. You can customize the shape and the color and all those good things. Um, so I'll show you that. Now, one thing you might notice uh, is for this territory in Seattle, uh, it has some uh, zip codes in Anchorage. So the territory center is off to the side. So there is the feature whereby you can say limit to largest contiguous area. Now, largest area is actually defined by the data, not by the actual physical area. And when you do that, you'll see that the center comes back into the uh, Seattle area. So um, that's the, the basics of uh, the centroids or the centers. You can, as I say, you can have put district centers on, you can put region centers on if you have those calculated, and you can do that on the, uh, on the map if, uh, if you want as well, the district or region map. So that's that. Uh, you can see this in tables. So now there is a center uh, table, and that's going to flow through to the exports. And there is also the um, the charts. There's some new charts now. So if we go back to uh, the charts, center analysis chart, you have these cool new charts that is going to be great for particularly the consulting companies that are doing maybe an assessment of a before and after. Um, but I'll just take you through these. So the first one is alignment radius analysis. So you've got the distance from the territory center on the X axis, and then you've got the percentage of this metric that falls within that certain radius. So just to sort of uh, make this uh, explicit, so 20 miles away from um, each center, there's around about 46, 47% of the index. And you can see as you obviously go further away from the center, virtually all of the index falls within that radius. Now you can have it as a percentage or you can have it as a um, an absolute number, depends what you want to look at. So that's the first type of analysis. The second type is territory radius analysis. So here what you do is you set a radius, um, maybe 100 miles in this particular example, and then you see what territories actually fall, what territories um, index falls within that radius. So you can see that for around about 155 uh, of these territories, 
they ought, they have all of their index within 100 miles. Now, if I was put to put this up to say 200 miles, then even more fall in that radius. Let's reduce it to say 50 miles and you can see less fall in that radius. Now, the, the cool thing is that you can click on these. So I'm going to just click on this territory. You can see the index there. Um, and if you click on, then you can actually see the territory. So there's a nice way of going backwards and forth to see the um, uh, the the uh, which territory and how it falls uh, in this chart. And then the final chart is the sales rep proximity to center. So how close do the reps live to the assigned territory? Now this looks like an extreme case. Uh, but you again, once again, you can click on these charts. So this is this center, the, the, the rep that is assigned to this center lives very long way away from the center, so on and so forth. Now, these can be exported to uh, any sort of different format. We've got um, PGNs, we've got JPEGs and the like, and then they can be easily integrated into PowerPoint presentations. So uh, that's quite a nice addition. Uh, I think uh, centers is something that we really needed to add to Align Mix, and now they're finally here. So uh, just um, for those who have joined maybe a late, then if you have any questions, please send them to joey, joey.domagala at alignmix.com, and we'll address those in the question and answer session uh, at the end. So it's joey.domagala at alignmix.com. You can also use the contact form at alignmix.com if uh, you can't quite get that uh, number down. So that is centers. The next one is zip code text data. Now, this has been a customer request for quite a long time. Uh, and the, the request normally says, how do I get the states or the state abbreviations or the state names uh, on the exports of the alignment. And up to now, we've just said, well, here's a list of them and you can sort of do a V lookup and, and um, you know, we'll hopefully add that in a future version. Well, now we have it. So let's uh, go to this alignment. And now if you do file import third party data, We've got the demographic data. We've always had that, all the demographic series, but we've got zip code text data. Now, if you're using uh, postcodes, then it would be the postcode text data, or if it was counties, it was be FIP code data. But now you can add, say, the state abbreviations. Now we have zip code type, whether it's a PO box or uh, a um, army overseas, uh, zip code type. Uh, we've got county name, county FIPS. We've got congressional districts. We've even got time zones. But we have state abbreviations. And now, once you do that, uh, if I go into and say uh, highlight or or select these um, zip codes, you can see in the zip code data we now have text uh, data in here. Now that's not the only way you can use them, because one of the major features in this release is the custom reports. Now, up to now, you've been able to do zip to territories and account exports and territory exports and so forth. But it's been just a, here's everything. Here's a whole dump of everything in your database. Now, that's okay, but it's meant that you've had to do some manipulation afterwards if you want to load it into maybe some sort of other system that requires data in a certain format. Well, we've completely rewritten the reporting engine and increased the power tremendously. So you get that by file, export, and then export to Excel. So here we have, I'm. Um, going to show you the zip codes. I'm going to do uh, counts, territories, and districts. I'm, I'm going to do them all. Why not? And for each one, you can do three different types of export. You can do the standard, which we've tried to really guess um, based on our experience what most people like in their exports. And so that's the, sort of the standard, the most common information. You can just dump everything. So that's every single field, or probably the most interesting one is the custom field. 
So I'm gonna set custom. I'll do custom for territories. I'll just do standard for these two and I'll do standard for personnel as well. So uh, when you select that, you hit next and you've got a very simple interface whereby you select the fields on the left and drag them to the right and that becomes your report. Now, uh, you can do that in a number of ways. So this is the zip code report. So remember the state abbreviation. So you can drag this over. Um, I, you might want it up here. So this is the, actually the order in which you're going to export the data. Uh, you can also just set maybe double click on a, um, maybe you want the order you, area, you can double click and it goes from one to the other. So that makes it nice and easy. You can also select multiple ones. Let's uh, take this numeric data and just copy that over. So once you're happy with this, uh, you can hit next. Uh, the accounts, the accounts are interesting. Uh, we have added things like distance to center and distance to sales rep, which is quite a nice addition. And of course, that's that's pulling off the um, at the center analysis. With, and that center is however you've defined it in the center territory center screen. And then what else do we have? We have the territory report. Again, um, we've got all the different components of the territory report. Uh, we've also got adjacent territories, number of uh, adjacent territories, that's new. We've also got contiguous parts, and you're going to see how we've enhanced the contiguous analysis in some of the uh, upcoming features. So once you hit next, you can select your style. You could always do this, and then um, you can save it. So it takes a little while uh, because that's actually quite a big export, but I'll just wait for it to finish. And I should say you can reorder all of those different fields in the customize uh, report. So it's really incredibly flexible. It's also saved into the file format. So when you next open the, the file, you will have your customized report exactly as you'd like it. So here we have it. Uh, you can see all of the, you've got the accounts there. You've got the distance to center, distance to sales rep. Uh, you've got the territories. Uh, districts, regions, and the personnel. So, so that's the uh, reporting engine. Now, another addition with this reporting engine, and we've used it throughout in several different components, is you can, when you query an area, so here I've got the, I'm querying these zips and accounts, I can share it and you can do a custom export. Now you can export the accounts or the zip codes in this particular view. If you were doing the territories, it would be a territory thing. But I can do custom export and then I can just export these zip codes and then go through and export them using the same powerful reporting engine. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can also copy, say, the accounts to the clipboard. Let's open um, Excel and paste and notice that the formatting comes across too. It's actually copying it in a native Excel format. So that's a really powerful thing that and I know a lot of you spend a lot of time sort of uh, mixing and matching and uh, doing these queries and figuring out what's in certain areas. So that's the custom reporting engine and uh, that's quite powerful. Now, here's uh, one of the features that is part of the AI version. I should say that most of the additions in AlignMix 2024 are to the core AlignMix Pro, and we're very committed to developing the Pro version as well as the uh, uh, AI version. But uh, one of the features that we're putting into the AI version is optimally assigning personnel. And this is just a cool feature that we've added in the last six months. Uh, let me show you how this works. So, um, well, let's go back. I think I've got some slides that explain this. So when would this be important? Well, if you're doing an expansion, you would do a realignment and then you'd have to figure out which reps are going to get the new territories. So it's certainly uh, important in this case. If you're doing a contraction, you have to figure out which reps are going to be assigned to the fewer territories. And if you're merging teams, you also need to figure out um, which reps are going to get which territories. And then you may also do an, an annual assessment, maybe looking at which reps live outside of their territory and 
assess them based on that. So let me show you how this works. I'll I'll turn off the centers and um, let's turn off the accounts and the centers. So we're just really seeing the personnel. And this, this tool is under the assign personnel tool. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unassign sales reps. So I'm going to unassign not all sales reps, but only those living outside their territory. And I can put a threshold here, but I'm actually going to say anybody living outside of their territory gets unassigned. And it says that that is 54 of 238. Now, again, you can use the reporting engine to get a report on those, or you can cut it, put it to the clipboard. So I hit finish, and you can see in California here, in this particular example, um, these reps lived outside of their territory and are unassigned. Now, um, I'm going to use it a second time to assign the reps. Now, you don't have to have got them pre-assigned like this. You could have imported them in uh, fresh. There can be no unassignments. But in this particular case, I'm just going to really reassign the um, the unassigned, what are now unassigned reps. So assign sales reps. And there are two options here. You can force the system to give priority to reps living in a territory. In other words, if a rep lives in a territory, then it will always be given preference uh, to have it assigned. Many of you will use that. Uh, that maximizes, that minimizes travel time, but it may result in more displaced reps. The alternative is to say that reps living close by may be assigned to a territory that they're close to, and that the rep living in that territory isn't given automatic priority. So here what you do is you define what close by means, and I'm going to say it's distance to the edge, but there are different criteria here. And I'm going to say close by means within 25 miles of a territory. Hit next. And then you say, well, how do you do a tie break? And you can do distance to center, distance to edge, and then distance to center. I'm going to use this one. We've also added a performance rating to the reps. And that's part of the import routine now. And you can drag across their performance rating. And higher is assumed to be better. And this can be used to do things like merge teams. Suppose you had two teams and you wanted to give one priority over another. Maybe there was an existing team and you had some sort of key account team and you decide to merge them. You're going to give the one priority over another. You can sort of artificially use that performance metric to achieve this. So then distance to edge, then distance to center. Hit next. It gives you the the what's going to happen. So 44 of the 238 are going to be newly assigned. There's going to be 10 reps still unassigned. So, and there are 10 territories still unassigned. You can get a report on that and hit finished. Now I should say, and now you can see these reps in California. So this rep here, uh, Connie Wesley has been assigned to this territory here. And I should say, this is doing a theoretical optimum uh, and it's incredibly objective. So imagine you're in HR or in legal, uh, this is an absolute boon if you have to assign reps to territories because it's actually doing something that is completely objective and it's doing optimum uh, assignments. So um, this is quite an exciting tool, an addition, and it's part of the AI version. It is quite a complicated tool. I've gone, across, gone uh, into that in very fast um, speed. So if you need more help on that or you want to know more, then give us a call and we can maybe talk about your specific situation. But that's the assigned personnel tool. Next up, contiguous territory analysis. So one of the things that we've always had in the territory tool is whether it's contiguous or not. And if you double click on this, it shows you the smallest incontiguous part. Uh, now, some that's great, and that's I think was revolutionary in um, alignment at the time. But um, many of you said, "Well, yeah, I know that's the smallest contiguous part, but what if there's five parts, and actually the smallest part or the the largest part, the the one that you get to this, you actually want to keep as um, part of the territory. You want to keep it in contiguous. Maybe it's Puerto Rico, 
Um, so you want to keep it contiguous. Well, now we've got the concept of parts count. So a part is a lump of zip codes that are assigned to a territory. And you can see this um, uh, Texarkana territory has four parts. And we can now click on these, right click, and I hope you can see this, but it gives you those four parts and it gives you the area of those parts. So I can, and these are actually very small parts. So I'm gonna click on the second one and you can see that this, if I change this to, uh, uh, no, that, that will be, these are the incontiguous parts here. So I can clean these up, touch a line and clean them up. So you can now go through, and it's a different one now, it's resorted, and you can see these different parts. So hopefully that's a much more powerful way of actually managing the parts. I should also say that in the export, let me take you to the export, whoops. Um, when you export in the batch export, I prepared one earlier, as they say. Um, you've got the accounts, you've got the zip codes, you've got the map, and now you've got contiguous parts. So you've it's given them a name. It shows you the area of these parts, and it shows you the zip code components of these parts. So that's quite a, a powerful addition to uh, the contiguous analysis. So, Rewriting the cleanup tool. The cleanup tool is one of the first things we added to Align Mix, and it is great for you know assigning accounts, uh, unassigned accounts, resetting overrides, and and the like. But it really needed a bit of an of a overhaul. So let's go to this now. So um, cleanup alignment. Now the last version, you had to do all of these. Um, at one after the other. The new version actually has some sort of one click. Um, you can do them in parallel. So I can, I'm gonna do unassigned zip codes, unassigned accounts, I'm gonna reset account overrides. And this is new in the AI version. I'm going to fix in contiguous territories. And I'll show you how that works. So this is again, it's pulling off the in contiguous analysis that we've added. So let's have a look at the scope. Uh, I want to add everything. Um, I'm going to do an automatic two pass of the uh, of the accounts, no, the zip code, sorry. This is the zip code. Um, I'm going to reset gains, reset losses. And for the contiguous analysis for the parts, I'm going to say any, any part that is, um, has a, area of greater than five miles squared, I'm going to reset to the host territory. Um, so I'm going to hit finish. It whirs away because it has quite a bit to do now. And it has cleaned the alignment. Now, just to show you, remember all of those in contiguous territories that came down to around about here. All of those have now been cleaned up. So these territories that are up here are actually quite large. So these this area here is higher than the five mile, five square mile threshold. Now you might want to clean that up manually, but you can see that's an incredibly powerful way to clean up all those incontiguous territories at the end of an alignment. So that's the contiguous alignment and the uh, cleanup tool. The next tool is batch delete. Um, and this is something that has been requested over the years. People would say, well, how do I delete all of the accounts? Or um, how do I delete the people? Uh, or how do I delete the series? And of course, there's a way of doing it. We sort of said, well, you need to lasso the whole of the US and then it pops up and then you can delete accounts. But it wasn't really a nice and neat way of doing it. So now in the tools area, we have batch delete. So I'm going to show you what you can do. Um, I'm going to select them all just for the sake of this. Uh, you can delete the data series. You can delete accounts. You can delete personnel. You can delete territories, districts, and regions. And you can filter that by only empty territories or only empty districts and regions. Empties 
defined as they don't have any zip codes or accounts assigned to them. So hit next, um, you can delete these series. Hit next, you can select which segments you want to delete or you can delete them all. Hit next um, and you can delete the people, sales reps, you can only delete unassigned people. So you can use that as a filter. Hit next gives you a summary. And then if I was to hit finish, it would delete absolutely everything that I've selected and allow you to start again. And I know a lot of you sort of find it just as easy to sort of delete the series and then re-import them because the import process is so easy. So that's the batch delete command. Next up, we have the edit color palette. And here we have under the maps, um, we've always had this palette and it's quite a flexible palette. It even has sort of colorblind um, colors for those that are red, green, colorblind. But now you can edit the color palette. So um, this is quite nice. You can edit it to make it your own. Um, you can select any color, um, select it in the color selection tool. Um, you can also export this. So you might decide that you have a special color that your company uh, wants to use. So you can export it and share it across the multiple users that you have and they can import it in and you can use your specific color palette. So uh, a nice little feature. You can also select the colors by name. These are the official uh, color names. So you can play around with that and um, customize to your heart's delight and you can rename and all sorts. So a nice touch to uh, customize the palette. The next one is task list. Now, this is a really simple feature that uh, one of our users requested, and it seems so simple to add that we had to add it. But now on the home screen, there is a task list, and you can just say, um, make a task, and once it's completed, you can complete it, you can hide completed tasks, you can copy and paste them, delete them, so on and so forth. But it's a nice way of recording uh, little notes to yourself or to other users that are using the file, maybe assumptions that you made or something like that. But um, simple feature, doesn't really interact with anything else in the application, So, but it's just a way of actually storing those tasks within the application. So that's the task list. And then there are some smaller additions. Account size, let me show you that quickly. So one of the things that you might have noticed, if you have a lot of accounts and account types, you've had to in the past, you sort of think, well, they're a bit too small. Let's let's make them a bit bigger. And you've had to go through and do each one individually, which is a bit of a pain in the neck. Well, now you've got this screen. So if you go to all accounts and you can have individually sized or you can size them um, so that they're all the same size. So I'm going to make them sort of gigantic. I, oh, I turned them off, so to help if I put them on. So now you've you've changed the size of all the accounts um, at once. Now you can go back in, and you can do individual sizes, or you can, as soon as you change this, um, it automatically says it's individually sized. So that's hopefully a little time-saving feature anti-aliasing account labels. So for speed, I believe we um, we changed, we had uh, account labels drawn. Let me find accounts, uh, defend the labels. Um, they're visible and then they were non-anti-aliased. Now we can actually increase the quality of these. Which ones were they? It was one of these, wasn't it? Was it one of these? So make sure the labels is selected on. They're on layers view, Steve. Ah, yes. Account. There we go. And it's much higher quality than it was before. So um, thanks, Joey. He knows what he's talking about. Um, copy tables to clipboard. I sort of showed you this earlier, but if you're in the territory table, you can now export table. Uh, which saves it, but you can uh, copy table 
And then if you go to Excel, it can copy in the native format. So I'm going to do this and then here, and you've got the native format there that you can um, do reporting on. So that's good if you just want to make a quick copy. Starting values for auto renumbering territories, that's an AI feature that has been, um, you can now put a starting value other than zero. And then the default rep icon color, it used to be black, it can now be adjusted uh, to whatever color you want. And labels can be colored in the, the territory, district or region of choice. Let me just show you how that works if you had an account based alignment. So I'll just flick over to that. And here we have an account based alignment. You've got the labels which you didn't have before and you can now color them as they were, or you can color them in the color of the territory. So of course that makes it easier to know roughly uh, which accounts are where. Um, so you can do the accounts in the color. So that makes a lot more sense. You can see exactly where the different territories are. So that is Align Mix 2024. There are lots of little things that we've added. Um, the territory centers is a big one. The people placement, another big one, and the reporting engine. Those are the three big things that are added. Let's talk a bit about the roadmap. Where are we going from here? We're actively developing Align Mix. Uh, we will be sending out a questionnaire once we have Align Mix 2024 launched, asking for feature requests. What do you want? And within reason, we're going to use those to guide our development process. Possible additions, we're act actively looking to have Align Mix in the Microsoft Store. We actually hoped to have that for this launch. We didn't quite make it. It's a more complicated process than we thought. Um, maybe importing GeoJSON, uh, which is a common geog geographic format as static layers, could be a good addition. And exporting GeoJSON in terms of territories and districts and regions. And then possibly integration with Salesforce. Um, we'll see. Uh, but again, those are just some things that we're thinking about. We'll be guided by the users and what they want. So what about the launch offer? We like to give an offer uh, at, the, at every launch, and this one is no exception. Now, just one thing we should clarify is the different versions. As in Align Mix 2021, there are two versions of uh, Align Mix. There is the Pro version, and that really gives you all the functionality that you need in a manual format. It's ideal for sales, sales teams of 50 sales reps and below. So there's multiple ways to realign territories, including the Touch Align, Lasso, three levels of hierarchy, unlimited territories, thematic maps, easily importing your data and exporting your data to Excel, PDF, and PowerPoint. Now, that's the, the sort of the core version. We also have Align Mix AI, and really think of this as intelligent automation. So this is ideal for those sales territory teams of more than 50 reps. So everything in the AI Pro, intelligent automation of territory creation, we've got touch optimize, we've got the optimal assignment of personnel, we've got that contiguous cleanup, batch rename, merging multiple files so that multiple people can work on the same thing, and then it can be merged together. So I just wanted to clarify the two different versions. Uh, I know not everybody would be aware of those two different versions. AI is obviously a premium version and the Pro is the core version. So the launch offer. First of all, for all users, you get a free one month upgrade to Align Mix AI 2024. So we'd like you to try all the latest features for a month. And I should say this is an unrestricted version. It hasn't got watermarks or anything like that. You can play around with all the features, use it to your heart's content. And obviously we're hoping that you fall in love with these features and that you decide you can't do without them. So that's for all users. We're also offering 20% off new Align Mix Pro one year licenses. So if you and your team need a couple of extra licenses, now's the time to get them, 20% off and there's a coupon code to go with that. There's also a 30% off new or upgrading to Align Mix AI 2024. So if you're currently an AI Pro user, we'd obviously pro rata and at any time you have on your current license, and you could take that off and upgrade to Align Mix AI at the 30% off discount. 
Now that's um, on new licenses. There's a coupon code for that. Uh, we're also offering free territory alignment assessments. We have, as we mentioned, merged and we're now part of the SC group. We have offices in the US, in London and in Switzerland, and we have a lot of global expertise in Salesforce strategy and alignments in general. So we're making that available as a free territory assessment to all of our clients and potential clients. So we'd take your data, take your uh, alignment and give you advice on customer segmentation, alignment criteria, workload buildup, team structure, white space, awkward territories. And obviously we can leverage some of the premium features in some of the premium versions to do this assessment. So um, if you are interested, then send an email to Joey and we'll set up an NDA so that we can exchange data confidentially. So how do you get Align Mix 2024? Well, to be clear, everyone with a current Align Mix license can upgrade to Align Mix 2024. So this is one of the advantages of doing the annual license. You always have access to the latest version. So you just go to the download page and as a little secret, the trial download and the pro download you're actually downloading the same thing. So as long as you can download Align Mix 2024 setup, then run it. It should upgrade your uh, current version and you will have access to all the new features. Uh, this comes with the latest geography, which is the zip codes for um, the US for 2023 Q4 and the counties, the latest county based alignment. So uh, free one month of AlignMix AI. If you're a AlignMix Pro user and you'd like a free one month unrestricted trial of AlignMix AI, again, uh, send an email to Joey and he will provide you with a code. Now, I would say that once you have AlignMix on your machine, you don't need to reinstall something for this. This is just a code that we will send you that will activate the AI component. And as I did mention, this is not restricted. It doesn't have any watermarks. If you're a pro user, you can still carry on using all the features of the pro version. You just have some extra features as a result. And with that 45 minutes or there and thereabouts, we have questions. So cool. Joey, where are we? So We've got like a dozen that have come in. Some of them you have answered as you went through your presentation, but we'll we'll still ask them. So when it comes to territory centers, can you show territory centers when on a district or a region map view? Yes, you can. So you can in in any map, even a thematic map or high low map or a bivariate map, you can show the territory centers the district and the region centers. I'm assuming you have territory, district, region. So you can, yes, you can show those. Cool. All right. So this is one you just answered is as a current user of AlignMix, how do we get access to the 2024 version? Well, you download the new version and you should be up and running. Uh, cool. And I should say that if you go to the website now and download it, you should get the latest version. Next question is, where do we request new features to be added for AlignMix? Ah, good question. Well, we're going to do a survey of users, and but we're always open to new feature requests. So Joey at joey.domagala at alignmix.com will work. The contact form on alignmix.com will also work. And we're keen to hear uh, of any new feature requests. Great. So question about the state abbreviations that are now included as that zip code data. Is there a way to always have that included or do you always have to import that text level data into each file when you start one? Or is there a default setting you can click? Uh, you do have to import for each file, but once you've imported it, it's good to go and it saves. So you don't have to do it each time you load the file. It's, it's obviously once it's imported, it's there. Great. All right, question about that lasso. So we have the updated version where you can copy data. In that lasso, when you copy and paste, can it also copy an image of the lassoed area that you've just lassoed? Mm. It, good it's idea. a good idea, yeah, yeah. A good idea. <laughs> That's one of those, hmm, it's a good idea. Um, 
it can't but as i say it's a good idea and it wouldn't be that difficult to add but um it isn't there at the moment right so this one we answered as well um what is the main difference between ai and the pro this one came in quite early on uh, but you can just list off the top difference yeah so the the main differences is the ai has the automated uh territory um creation so you can give it you can lasso um well let me just show you am i sharing my screen no i'm not am i um steve share screen so let's just go to this one um so take this alignment this has 238 territories um what you can do is you can go to tools um territory optimizer include all and then say 200 and well let's go up to uh, let's go up to 300 territories suppose this was an expansion hit next uh, i'm going to base it on index i'm going to do plus or minus 15 percent uh, i'm going to minimize disruption and then i'm going to go through that's alaska hawaii i'm going to have one person puerto rico nobody and then it goes away it's an incredibly fast algorithm um, but now you have 300 territories down at the bottom and you can see that they are all now within this i think that's uh, hawaii they're all with, within 15 percent and it's used the state boundaries and things wherever possible um, so now, as an example, just to give you an idea of what you can do, you can unassign, say, all sales reps using the tool. And now you can go back and in the AI version, assign sales reps. I'm going to do this very quickly. Distance to edge, less than 30 miles. And then it's managed to assign 231 of the 238 and it's assigned them all to the territories based on that maximized assignments minimized displacements so you can see that in that version we're really doing a tremendous amount of uh, analysis and optimization in a short space of time so that's the ai version uh, in the pro version you could still do that you just have to do it manually so that's why it sort of works for sales teams of 50 and less but once you get to 50 that automated uh, way of creating territories is really a boon and uh, saves a tremendous amount of time good so glad you brought up the people placement tool because that's where our new tech two questions are from will that people placement tool recommend where to place new reps for new territories that were created well that's sort of the centers um so it doesn't it doesn't do that big but you could use you'd use the centers and the weighted centers as the guide of where to, where you should have a new rep located right yeah great next question does the people placement tool show an excel export of kind of like who is displaced or who was moved to where yes it does that um let me let me show you that so i'm going to undo that people placement so i'm going to assign personnel assign reps next uh i'm just doing um exactly what i did before and then you've got these reports so i'm going to click the report to put it into excel and it sh it shows um the people who they're assigned to and if they weren't assigned so obviously if they weren't assigned then they were displaced so these two people were displaced and it shows you whether they live in the territory and you can see not all of them live in the territory but they're all within a certain distance to the territory hopefully that makes sense good Here's another question that you did answer as you were going through. I think they just jumped the gun a little bit. Is there an easy way to fix all of your incontiguous sales territories all at once instead of clicking each one individually? And yes, it's part of the, the new cleanup tool. The new cleanup tool. Now we have to put a, a, a there is that threshold of certain area. So once you get to such a large area, you don't want it to clean that up. So maybe five miles, maybe 
10 miles, square miles. Um, so there's that threshold, but that saves a tremendous amount of time, uh, especially if you just come to a real, at the end of a realignment. You've got all these little little zip codes that have um, missed missed being realigned when you've cha made changes. That's an absolute boon to cleaning it up. Right. Question about the batch delete. When you do the batch delete when it comes to data, will that also remove the state abbreviations? Like if you didn't want to do it, would it do it by accident or is it always going to be within that file? Uh, you've got the option. You can click to delete them or not. So again, on this one, um, batch delete. If I do data series, I don't have it here. Let's import them. File, uh, import third party data. I can see that the state abbreviations is a one that people like. Uh, state abbreviations next. OK. And then on the batch delete, if you do data series, you can just not select state abbreviations and it won't be deleted. OK, right. you select what's what's deleted. Great. Another question for your task list list. Um, is there a way to just copy and paste data into it? So if you built it in yes. Word, can you just put it in there? Yes. Um, let me show you that. You're not sharing screen. Yep, I will do. Oh. Home task list. You've got these copy and paste down here, um, and that will copy and paste them. Uh, I think it's just plain sort of comma separated variable type co uh, copy and paste. But um, yes, you can sort of paste in a whole load of tasks if that's what you really need. Great. And then two final questions that came in five minutes apart regarding Canada. Does Alignmix work with Canada? And they just want some information about this. I already emailed them, but yes, Alignmix works with Canada. Uh, we can work with any of the countries out there. The Canadian shapes can be bought online. It's just a one-time add-on per user, and it's for the three-digit Canadian FSAs. And the process for it is exactly the same. Everything you've seen us doing is it'll work in any other country or shape file. And we also had a follow-up question for Canada and Australia. So right now. Canada, same answer. With Australia, it's currently packaged in, included in your pro license, the 2016 vintage postcode shapes. So that's included in everybody's pro and AI license right now. If you're looking to get more up-to-date postcodes, just reach out and we'll have to quote you on what that additional fee would be. So that is everything that's come in. If anyone thinks of more questions, please feel free to email me whenever. We can always hop onto a different uh, web session or a chat and uh, get those answered. Great. Well, thanks everybody for joining. And uh, as we mentioned, this is the, the offers for uh, the launch. And remember, there's an assessment as well, free assessment. Uh, you can leverage our global experience uh, doing this all of the time for many different countries and companies and um, pick our brains regarding these different uh, these different areas. So with that, many thanks for joining. And we have recorded this and we will be sending out uh, a link to some sort of recording. I'm not sure if it'll go on YouTube or, or whatever, but um, we will be sending this out. So let us know if you have any questions, look out for the survey that We'll have sort of options for future enhancements. And obviously, let us know if you have any questions or there's anything that you're not quite sure about. Cool. Okay. Many thanks. All right. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye bye.